What's up guys, this is Ray and welcome to Asian Filmist and I have another review of an anime movie for you guys today and that movie is Godzilla City on the Edge of Battle. This is the 2018 sequel to the 2017 anime Godzilla Monster Planet and it's once again directed by Shizuno Kobun and Seshita Hiroyuki. And so in the sequel it continues directly from the first movie so if you haven't seen the movie, if you haven't seen the first movie then you definitely might want to watch it before watching this movie because you will probably not understand anything that happens. In this movie so just a word to you guys who haven't seen it definitely check it out first but yeah the story takes place directly after if not moments after the very ending of the first movie and we have our hero Haruo he wakes up it ends up that he's he survived the final encounter with the big Godzilla at the end of the first movie and it ends up that he has gotten rescued by this indigenous tribe who has been living on earth for a long time pretty much after all the humans have left so Haruo has to go and find his his allies who apparently have also survived and they have to regroup and contact their mothership because the mothership had has uh, made a decision that if they can't find any survivors of the big Godzilla attack then they'll just leave earth so Haruo and company have to uh, have to regroup, uh, reconnect with the mothership and inform everyone that they're alive. But uh, what happens when, while interacting with this indigenous group of people, they discover that they use a nano metal in all their weaponry from their arrows to their spears. But what nano metal is, what, the reason why they recognize what nano metal is, is because it's the same material that they had used to build Mecha Godzilla, which was Earth's last line of defense against Godzilla centuries ago. So the survivors, they all have to go find Mecha Godzilla and hopefully it's still operational so that way they can use it to once again take on the big G. So as far as the positives go for Godzilla the city on the edge of battle, uh, the animation, you know, I think the animation is, is just as, I think it's just as good as the first movie, uh, you know, even though it's cell shading, I think that the way this movie, this these pair of movies use cell shading it was much better than what your typical anime movie cell shading usually consists of. I think for the most part, whenever I watch a movie that's animated in cell shading, the characters are really emotionless or expressionless, or at least you don't buy what they're trying to convey. But I think for the most part, in this in, in this Godzilla movies, it was fine. You know, I didn't have any problem with it. And that being said, the character designs and the mecha designs, once again, were, were wonderful. Really nicely animated, and even Godzilla. This time around, we were they're fighting against Godzilla Earth, who's a giant ass Godzilla that came out at the end of the first movie. And definitely, the way Godzilla was treated in this one, he's still scary as all hell. But I felt like his presence was much more intimidating than in the first movie. I enjoyed it. And when Godzilla is on screen, and whenever he wrecks havoc and causes destruction, it is ridiculous. The the scale of things is so large. Everything just blows up. I mean. He's destroying his giant city, uh, and everything is just uh, exploding left and right. And then you have uh, you have the human, you, or you have the survivors piloting these mechs, flying around trying to trying to find the best way to attack and kill Godzilla. And I think for the most part, the way the story flows in the the second movie, I thought it was a bit better than the first movie, mainly because uh, you don't have as much science jargon. As the first movie, I felt they really went, they really went overboard with the science jargon in the first movie. This still got a lot, of, a lot of science jargon in the second movie, but not as much. And this second movie focuses a lot more on the non-humans, uh, the non-human survivors that are featured in the group, more so than in the first movie, mainly because uh, you get to learn more about their histories and their skills and how some, how some groups of aliens are more keen. I can't remember the name of these races; they escape me all the time. But there's this one group of aliens uh, of non-humans that are just in sync with Mecha Godzilla and the way they just know how to operate it is just pretty cool when you actually see them in action and the story i think it, it set up some uh, some easter eggs you know you have the the indigenous tribe of people that live on earth and i you know they don't explicitly mention it but it say, they say that their god had gotten to a fight with Godzilla in the past and uh, all that's left of their god is an egg. So I think, I mean, the obvious answer to as, as to who this god is is Mothra. Uh, whether the, Mothra will be in the, in the third movie, that has yet to be seen. But 
at least the one name that they dropped that is definitely going to be in the third movie because if you've seen any of the posters for the third movie, he's definitely there, and that's King Ghidorah. So that's pretty much it with the positives. As for the negatives, I don't like the way they treated Mechagodzilla in this movie. I mean, I think Mechagodzilla was one of my favorite uh, supporting Godzilla characters back in the day. And the way he was, I mean, for the, from the first movie, you got all this hype. He was name dropped in the first movie. And uh, if you if you watch the post credit scene, you kind of get this this uh, image that featured this obscured image of Mechagodzilla. And so you know that Mechagodzilla is going to be in the second movie in some way, shape, or form. He is in this movie, but the way they kind of messed around with this character is that, uh, first of all, he's made of nanometal, the substance I mentioned previously. And the, the way uh, this, uh, this nanometal is, is over the past thousands of years, it's evolved to kind of have a mind of its own. And it's it was over the centuries, it's been expanding and expanding. So that way, it, it now forms its kind of its own city, like this mechanical city that where the old head of Mechagodzilla is the core control of it all. So Mechagodzilla, as far as what I remember, doesn't actually show up in a in a kaiju form. He's he's 100% a city the whole time. And I think that was kind of a big letdown because I wanted to see how a redesign Mechagodzilla would be in the context of this movie. I was really looking forward to it, but instead we got this this city with lots of guns and turrets to, to take down Godzilla. I mean, it was okay, but it's kind of like, you know, if you if you guys are a fan of Marvel movies, uh, you remember those second Fantastic Four movies. Not a good example, but you remember how they were hyping up Galactus to be in the movie, but in the end he was just b this big uh, storm cloud. That's kind of the... the that's kind of the way I felt about the way they treated Mechagodzilla in this movie. I, I was disappointed to say the least. And I felt like there were far fewer scenes of Godzilla, of actual Godzilla in this movie than the first one. Granted, in the first movie, there weren't so many scenes that featured Godzilla. And many of them were saved from uh, from the, uh, saved until the second act, uh, all the way until the very end of the movie. And in this movie, in the second movie, uh, Godzilla's pretty much asleep the whole time. And then he comes out in the third act. And you know, when he's out there, it's great. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. But building up to it, it's kind of like, all right, when's Godzilla going to start moving? They keep talking about Godzilla, but we don't see him. And that was a big letdown too. And so, you know, it definitely it can definitely derail from what a typical Godzilla would feel like. You know, there aren't many scenes at all of Godzilla just doing rampant destruction to different struct cities or uh, to even like attacking the humans. Not until the very end. And not only that, but I felt like the pattern of the story or rather the progression that the story went through was pretty much the same, the same exact thing as the first movie. I mean, you have uh, you have these survivors. They get together. They plan their attack against Godzilla. They locate Godzilla, or rather, they lure try to they try to lure him into a trap so they can take the way they can take him down with what they think is a good strategy. They're flying around Godzilla with their mechs. You know, in the first movie it was like the 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 hover bikes. In this movie, they they managed to make some mech suits. So they're flying around. They're trying to get Godzilla, but then you know. In the end, the, the the way everything turns out, it's pretty much the same as the first movie. And another thing, the indigenous people, I think they're called the Hotu or something. It starts with an H. I can't recall it uh, for the life of me right now. But the way they were treated in this movie, they were very underused. They were just they were just mainly a plot device. So that way the 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 survivors can get introduced to nano metal. So that way they can move to Mechagodzilla City, and you know they have this nice buildup and this aura of mystery that you, you know made you really want to find out more about them. Now I hope uh, in the third movie they actually get put into, uh, get put into better use. But in this movie they're kind of like they are just for pl for plot progression and also for Easter eggs and setup and. And it was it was a big bummer too. But overall, what did I have to say about Godzilla City on the Edge of Battle? No, it was fine. I mean, I think overall I might have liked it a little better than the first movie. I mean, there are parts I like better than the first movie. There are parts of, about the first movie that I like better than this movie. But I think, oh, for the most part, it's the same movie as the first one. Uh, and because I have to just kind of dock it a lot, dock a lot of points from it. Because I mean, I wanted something different. 
I wanted to see Mecha Godzilla in a kaiju form fight off against Godzilla. I, I didn't get the kaiju versus kaiju battle that many of us were expecting from the hype that uh, that the first movie left off on. But you know, it, it, with the third movie, I just hope that they they change up the story pattern. They make it a bit different than these two movies because if they do then it's kind of like all right what was the point in making a trilogy of movies but i mean other than just to see a re a remix version of these kaiju that we all like you know it's something i genuinely look forward to but i definitely want to look forward to a different type of story as well but do i recommend this movie i mean might as well i guess i mean it's only like a hundred minutes long it's on netflix i mean i i wouldn't expect much nothing more then the first movie if, in terms of quality i mean as you can tell by my the the confidence in my voice i'm not exactly 100 percent of recommending this movie but you know if you're a godzilla fan you might as well check it out it's not the must watch movie of the year i thought the first one was more of a standout just because wow this is godzilla in a new form but then you know this year with this movie it's like well it's more or less like the same thing i mean it's not a standout much but yes those are my thoughts on godzilla city on the edge of battle what do you guys think what kind of questions did you guys have let me know in the comment section below please like share and subscribe follow me on facebook and twitter and by all means please support asian films on patreon it definitely helps the channel a lot and hey did you know i started a discord server for fans of asian films who want to talk together and talk uh, talk about asian films with other fans leave a comment in the comment section below and i'll leave you a link so you guys can join our discord server and yeah that's about it for me guys and as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you all again in the next video. Take it easy.